time we're going to be ready for it and you know Oklahoma's a tough team and you know we're going to like I said we're going to try to see what we're made of the first game and see what happens. Before we won any titles I there was always the promise of the coaches that if we worked hard that this was out there but I think once you taste victory it uh, you don't want to let it go. <laughs> The Gary Barnett Show is brought to you by Adidas, performance, tradition, and athletic excellence. Northwestern football and Adidas, proud partners. Your local Chevrolet dealers, people you can trust when you're looking for a great car value. And by Pepsi, Generation Next. Well, hi again, everybody, and welcome to another season of the Gary Barnett Show. I'm Dave Ennett, along with the head football coach of the two-time defending Big Ten champion, Northwestern Wildcats. We are in Ryan Field in Evanston, Illinois, which is, as you can see, under construction. Uh, heading into the Wildcats home opener here September 13th. First things first, Gary. You have a game in a matter of hours against the Oklahoma Sooners, a Saturday game at Soldier Field in the Pigskin Classic. And you have a team which you have termed under construction. I think it's very fitting, uh, Dave. We've started building this thing since last January, after the, immediately after the Citrus Bowl. And uh, uh, our, we, we've only got 10 or 11 seniors on our team, and they've really done a nice job of uh, uh, being foreman, I guess you'd say, in this construction. And they've, they've, they've worked the younger kids. They've been exemplary in everything that they've done. And, uh, I, I, I think this has been the, as fun a group as I've had to coach and to watch them grow as, as any group I've ever had. Last year when you brought your players together after the Rose Bowl season, you had everybody put their accomplishments and accolades down on placards, including yourself, and then put them in a trash can symbolically. Did you do anything that dramatic this time around to try to turn the focus from 96 to 97? Well, not exactly that way. What, what we did was uh, we took spring football and uh, we call that our crucible, that that, that was going to be a, a test of purity and strength for us. Uh, and those 15 days, the way we handled it, and we had the, probably the 15 most solid days of spring that we'd ever had. And uh, we, we told this team it was going to be under construction uh, and that we were going to grow every day. And at least it's, we asked them to do, and we asked for, for our seniors to, to lead us in that way. The, uh, this summer, uh, our seniors took responsibility, for one senior for every position, guys coming back. And we broke all of our records of, uh, for conditioning this year uh, when they showed up in August or July. Well, we're going to talk about the 97 Wildcats. We'll also feature fullback Matt Hartle in our sideline segment, and we'll talk about the matchup coming up with the Oklahoma Sooners. That's all straight ahead on the Gary Barnett Show. The chemistry he brings to the team with his attitude, uh, you know, and the sort of presence he has around him, and then uh, the fact that he's a great football player. I mean, he can't hurt us, you know. And, and uh, you know, he was one of our best players two years ago, and unfortunately, we had to go last season without him. It'll help help a lot to have him back out there. Right Welcome back to the Gary Barnett Show. Well, Wildcat fans are familiar with the story of fullback Matt Hartle. He was the starter for the Wildcats in their Rose Bowl season. Scored the winning touchdown at Michigan, but missed all of last year while waging a heroic battle against Hodgkin's disease. Now Matt Hartle is back, and he's the subject of our sideline segment. I think first of all, I think the biggest thing was my hair fell out. I've never been bald before, and that was kind of interesting. You look in the mirror and you don't recognize yourself and then you lose 40 pounds, and it's kind of the same thing. You look kind of like a skeleton of what you used to look like. I don't take anything for granted. I mean, I've said it before, but I always thought that I've had football. That just it, I'll wake up one day, and it'll be there for me. I'll strap on the pads and be able to hit people. And once it was taken away from me, you look at different things differently. Well, they were great through the whole deal. I mean, they asked me how I was feeling the whole time, and they gave me encouraging, you know, words and that type of thing, and they helped me through different, you know, processes that I was feeling. So I think overall they were a great support. Uh, it's been exciting. 
and kind of grueling too. I mean, getting back into it, it was kind of frustrating just because you go out there and you expect 100% from yourself and your body isn't willing to give 100% and it's kind of frustrating sometimes because you know what you used to be able to do and then you can't go out there and do what you were able to do before, so that's frustrating. I think to get back to the, the level I was playing at 95 at the end of that season, I think that I was playing the best football that I was, you know, able to play at that time. And then I was, you know, I had to take a year off and I'm just trying to get back to that level mm -hmm. and, you know, go further than I was that year. Wayne Bates goes in motion right to left. Schnur takes the snap, play fake. He's going to throw man wide open. Sliding catch. Touchdown, yeah. Matt Hartle. Matt Hartle's first touchdown. And the Wildcats take the lead. This was my first trip, my recruiting trip, and I liked the coaches and I liked what they stood for. And I think I wanted, I wanted to be a part of a, a program that was going somewhere from the bottom to the top. And I think we went from the bottom to the top. Uh, I think our expectations are the Rose Bowl. I think anything less would be, uh, it's going to be disappointing. Uh, our expectations are so high just because of what we've had the last two seasons. And we want to get back to that you know, type of caliber of football. I mean, we're there, but we just need the stepping stones. Gary, I think a lot of people are going to take inspiration from Matt Hartle's story. It's a remarkable story. You were with him step for step throughout this process. Any element of surprise in your mind that he's back and playing? Not really. He set a goal. I, I remember the day that uh, we found out for sure. And uh, uh, of course, he was struggling with all that. But he set a goal to be back on his football field in a year. And uh, he knew that his teammates were going to support him, and he knew the coaches were going to support him, that we were his family now. Uh, he didn't want to go home uh, back to Denver. He wanted to stay here and uh, be a part of everything. And, you know, we took him to almost every game last year. There was a couple games we couldn't go because he was so ill from uh, chemotherapy treatments. But uh, I, I think Matt's overcoming of the Hodgkins is a great example of what teams do for the players on that team and, and how is the kind of family atmosphere that gets created in sports. Now you had another guy on the Rose Bowl team who did not play in 1996, the linebacker Don Holmes. He's back with you now. Donnie is back and uh, uh, Donnie uh, uh, set out for a year and has done everything that I've asked him to do and uh, deserves a chance to come back and he's come back. He's done very well. Uh, he, and he's, he, you can tell he missed a year, but he's, he's making up ground fast and uh, he's going to fit in and, and really help our football team this year. Well, those aren't exactly new faces on the Wildcats, but there are quite a few. I think you'll, we'll all need our programs <laughs> coming up this Saturday. And coming up next, we'll take a look at some of the new faces on the 97 Wildcats. That's next on the Gary Barnett Show. Yeah, our defense is going to be, be the strong, definitely strong point of our team. We have a lot of, a lot of good athletes and a lot of depth in, uh, in every position. So uh, we can't wait. We can't wait to get started. Linebacker Barry Gardner, one of the captains of the 97 Wildcats in this defense that has undergone some changes, notably the loss of the two-time college defensive player of the year, Pat Fitzgerald, who I know is such an emotional leader for you, Gary. Pat's a hard guy to replace, and you really don't try to ask another player to step up and do what he did. You try to ask all the other players to just take on a bigger role and do their part a little better than they did last year. You know, what Barry's talking about in there when he says that, that more athletic defense, what, what that means is that we have better quickness than we've had before, probably run better than, we've had, than we have in the past. And uh, even though the 95 team was a pretty athletic and, and, and pretty fast team, I think this team's got a chance to be along the same lines. You've been real excited about the play of your defensive backs here in fall camp. We've had uh, a lot of depth created in the last year. And uh, uh, I think for a year ago, we didn't have any depth at the safety spot. And I think we've got now at least two and three guys at each one of those positions that I really feel confident about playing. A year ago, we, we barely had two corners. And now I think we've got four, maybe five guys that we have a lot of confidence in. And so. That, that means that we can spell some guys on special teams. It means that we can spell them in the middle of the game. Uh, it means that we have a lot of competition, which means everybody works a little harder and gets a little better in the process. First question a coach always gets is, who's going to start at quarterback? You had a terrific one in Steve Schnur for the past couple of years, but 
Uh, now you've turned the job over to Tim Hughes in the starting role. Tim Hughes has uh, survived a slugfest with uh, Chris Hamdorf, and, and uh, it, it's one of those deals where you really, at the end of this match, you want to go out and raise both hands because they'd both done so well. They, neither one of them had, uh, had missed a rep, uh, no injuries, uh, things that might have hurt them, they fought through. Um, they both performed well all spring, all summer, they were exemplary. And so it's, it's a really tough decision. We had to set some criteria, and we set it based on 11-on-11 uh, 11 11, uh, work, scrimmages, and, and Tim won out in that particular situation. So uh, Tim will start, and uh, Chris is going to play at least two series in each game. Uh, we heard from Barry Gardner, one of your captains. Uh, he's a junior linebacker, of course, former walk-on, center Nathan Strickwerda. And uh, strong safety, Eric Collier, your other captains. Well, the, the great thing about that, Dave, is, is Barry was a walk-on. Nathan Strickwerda was the last player we took on scholarship. We took him in August uh, five years ago. And he was going to walk on at the University of Wisconsin. And now he's become a captain for this football team. And, and I think that uh, you see more and more of that today in college football with the reduced scholarship numbers. That Walk-ons have a great opportunity and a great chance. And of course, uh, Barry just came in and earned a scholarship before he was here, and he's been an inspirational leader since he was a freshman. Well, I know we're going to be seeing a lot of these guys playing on Sundays in the future. I know for now it's fine with you that they're playing on Saturdays. Let's take a look at some of the Wildcats in the pros in our NFL News and Notes. As of July 1st, there were 18 former Wildcats on NFL rosters, which included eight from last year's squad. Outside linebacker Tim Sharp, who was a prominent member of the Cats during the last two seasons, continues to impress with the New York Jets. Also on the Jets is former Cats offensive lineman Matt O'Dwyer. The 6'5", 300-pound O'Dwyer is entering his third year in the NFL. Pat Fitzgerald, the first college player to win back-to-back -back Defensive Player of the Year awards, was recently cut by the Dallas Cowboys. The free agent now hopes to hook on with another NFL team. But the former Wildcat making the biggest impression is Chicago Bears running back Darnell Autry. In the Bears' first preseason game in Ireland, he forced a fumble and recovered it. And then later in the game, he made a run that many Northwestern fans have seen before bouncing off tacklers and then sprinting 46 yards for the touchdown. Well, Gary, I know Wildcat fans are going to miss seeing number 24 line up in your offensive backfield, but they're excited they'll see number 21 for the Bears now, and it's the same guy. Well, that run he had against Pittsburgh was vintage Darnell. We saw for two and a half years, but, you know, there'll be a new number here here at Ryan Field, and uh, they carry the same sort of excitement. You know, it might be number 32. We're hoping that it is, but you never know. But there'll be someone that'll create a legend and become a hero, uh, uh, carrying the ball for us again. What's the process that Darnell's going through right now? It's more of a mental game than anything else. It's just the pressure of knowing that uh, you're not on a four-year scholarship. You could be cut at any time. New offense. It's a foreign language to him. Uh, knowing he's fighting for a spot. Uh, that's, that's the kind of pressure she's struggling with. Well, when we come back, we're going to take a tour of Ryan Field. We're going to take you inside the Wildcats' new home. That's next on the Gary Barnett Show. I think that, uh, you know, there's been a number of programs that have been uh, traditionally losers. And all of a sudden, as late, all of a sudden, they've made a complete turnaround and if I one have had success. Uh, and, and so the, a lot of credit has to go to Gary and all the people that are involved in that program. Welcome back to the Gary Barnett Show. We're coming to you outside Ryan Field as the construction continues. We're joined now by Paul Kowalczyk. Paul is the Associate Athletic Director for External Affairs here at Northwestern. And Paul, it's been an awfully busy spring and summer here in Evanston. Yes, it has, Dave. We actually began this project back at the end of football season in November. And we're very close to completing it now. All right, why don't we take a look around and see some of the new features here at Northwestern. Sounds great. Let's All right, go. Let's go. Well, we're in the, uh, the new lot today. Very nice. Very nice. A little bit different than the old place. Oh, unquestionably. We have uh, over 100 all wood, all oak wood lockers. And as you can see, they're 
provide just about as much space uh, you can almost park their cars in these things. <laughs> yeah, quite, quite a lot uh, bigger than the old locker room over in the stadium. Uh, I like the mirrors. That's a nice touch. Well, you know, football players have egos too, you know. <laughs> we also have the televisions set up so that uh, they can watch some videos and, and uh, whatever needs to be the case for pregame preparation or practice preparation. Well, we're now inside the training room and we have, uh, as you can tell, quite an elaborate setup here. Uh, to our right here, there's six taping tables. Pre, pre game, pre practice. And we have eight uh, uh, treatment tables. And there are also a table in each doctor's room as well. All right, so we're in the equipment room equipment now. Equipment room, yes. We have uh, issue lockers, one for each player, obviously, and uh, these come in very handy. This facilitates the process of getting the players their equipment. Because we have uh, bigger players now, we have a bigger equipment room. Because you have bigger equipment. So you can see all along the racks and the rows here of the, uh, the shelving to handle and store all of the equipment that we have. All right, I guess we've seen everything here. Let's move on. Yeah, Dave, you know, after a while you stand in the equipment room and you get tunnel vision. So maybe we should move on to the Good stadium. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dave, we're inside of Ryan Field now and plenty of changes have happened inside the stadium. First and most noticeable is the new playing surface, the grass turf. Uh, it's a state-of-the-art technology, brand new drainage system, and we have a grass uh, root system that will adhere to a plastic system underneath, which will make the, surf the surface strong and tight. Uh, also, the field's been lowered about five and a half feet. That provides better sight lines for all of our fans and should provide a more bowl-like setting for the team to play in. Yeah, I can tell you already that just uh, here in the first few rows of the stands, the sight lines are already better. Now over here, this is where the players will actually emerge from their uh, locker facilities, from the training room and whatnot, and they'll uh, head onto the field down that little incline. Yeah, it'll be a much more exciting entrance for Wildcat fans these days. It's a short entrance, lots of noise, lots of excitement. Well, that's the view the Wildcats are going to see as they emerge from the locker room out into Ryan Field. And Gary, what's been the biggest impact so far on you and your players? The locker room, uh, I'm sure, is at this point kind because we've been able to move in and be in it now for, oh, two or three weeks. I think that uh, the grass, going to natural grass, has probably uh, brought more uh, smiles to the players than anything else. And, and then having the field lowered five and a half feet, just it's going to create a great home atmosphere for our team and I think for our fans as well. And, and of course the press box and all that sort of stuff doesn't impact our players the way the other things do. Now, have you worked on grass more this year than you would have in the past because you're gonna be playing your home games on grass? Absolutely, we also did in the spring. We practiced all spring on the grass and uh, uh, we've had to go inside a couple of days now, but we've been on the grass entirely and uh, it's easier on the players' legs. They enjoy it more. They'd much rather go outside than inside. Of course, it's going to be a few more weeks before the Wildcats play a game here. First up, a trip to Soldier Field to take on the Oklahoma Sooners. And we'll take a look at the Wildcats' first opponents coming up next on The Gary Barnett Show. And, you know, it just depends on how they you know put that together and uh you know how they come in and uh i think uh i think you know it could be a real good game well the pigskin classic with the oklahoma sooners is just hours away from the northwestern wildcats the first game of the year in college football is just about the time when the butterflies set in gary <laughs> dave i think they set in about uh, july 28th when this all started to happen and we took this game uh because great tradition that uh, oklahoma has the fact that we're going to be a young team and then we wanted to play at Soldier Field and we wanted to play in front of the Chicago fans and uh, uh, the, the tradition that Oklahoma brings to this game and is just incredible and uh, the tradition of their program. Uh, you may not hear about it so much back here but when I was, I played the Big 8, coached the Big 8, uh, I would rather play Nebraska 10 times a year than play Oklahoma once. That's how good they've been. Well, is this special for you, given your Big 8 roots? Because this is the first team from the Big 8, the Big 12, that you've coached against here at Northwestern. And when you were at Colorado, Oklahoma beat you guys several years in a row, and then, then you beat them. And, and was that kind of a, a hurdle you had to overcome in that program? They beat us many years in a row, wasn't mm -hmm. several. Uh, beating Oklahoma and Nebraska, were, that, that was the, the goal all the time. And, uh, 
it was so hard uh, at that point in time to, to even uh, line up with those guys. And uh, I know how good they are and how, how well coached they are and the tradition they have in their program. And trying to infuse our players with that same sort of uh, 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 feeling, you know, the, the same sort of respect. You've talked a lot about the speed that this Oklahoma team has. Great speed. Um, secondary runs very well. Both quarterbacks run tremendously well. Eric Moore's a great option quarterback. The other quarterback starts one day, and he's, he throws the ball very well, but he's also mobile. Uh, they're up front, defensive linemen, and, uh, big, strong, fast guys. Got a linebacker by the name of Smith that's uh, they probably built their defense around him. Uh, all over the board, they run very well. Now they're, they're playing some young guys this, well, this year as well, and from that standpoint, it's a pretty good match. Uh, as far as the experience goes, but athletically, they, they are superb. Well, it's here, an 11 a.m. kickoff at Soldier Field, Northwestern in Oklahoma. Plenty of good seats available for the game at the gate. We hope to see you there. Coach, good luck against the Sooners. We'll see you back here as you get ready for Wake Forest next. Thanks, Dave. All right, and that'll do it for the Gary Barnett Show. I'm Dave Ennett. Have a great two weeks, everybody. The Gary Barnett Show is brought to you by Adidas. Performance, tradition, and athletic excellence. Northwestern football and Adidas. Proud partners. Your local Chevrolet dealers. People you can trust when you're looking for a great car value. And by Pepsi. Generation Next. In five years, we've succeeded in rebuilding. <laughs> okay, let me start again. Yeah, yeah. Five years, we succeeded in doing what we said we'd do. When we... Forget it. Okay.